For problem 12, on a map, one and a half inches represents 35 miles. If town A is six inches apart from town B on the map, what is the actual distance? So this is a proportional relationship, and we're comparing inches to miles. And here on the map, you have one and a half inches for 35 miles. So town A is six inches, from town B on the map, what is the actual distance, so in miles, and we don't have that. And so in order to find the value of M, the actual distance, we wanna find the multiplier. Um, and so how many times is um, one and a half to six? So we can do the inverse property of multiplication, which is division. So six divided by 1.5 is four. So our multiplier is four. So if the inches is four times greater, the miles are going to be four times greater. So we do 35 times four, which equals 140. So town A is 140 miles from town B. For number 13, we're evaluating the expression three to the fourth power. So the three represents the base, and the exponent tells you how many times to multiply the base. So we have three times three, which is nine, and then we're gonna multiply nine by three, which is 27, and 27 multiplied by three is 81. 13b, we have a quantity of negative three squared. So since this is in parentheses, what's the base is negative three, and that's what's being multiplied two times. So we have Neg negative 3 squared is negative 3 multiplied by negative 3, which equals positive 9. Remember, a negative multiplied by a negative is going to be a positive. 13c, 2 to the fourth power. The base is 2, the exponent's 4. So we're multiplying 2 to itself four times. 2 times 2 is 4 times two is eight, eight times two is 16. Number 14, list all the factors of 32. Factors are two numbers when multiplied equal 32. So here's the list of factors. And I did that by starting at one, one multiplied by 32 is 32, two times 16 is 32, there's not a number um, that I can multiply three by to get 32, so three is not a factor. Four times eight is 32. Five's not a factor, and six and seven are also not factors of 32 because there's not a number you can multiply five, six, or seven to get 32. Number 15, write the least common multiple for four and six. Well. Multiples of 4 are 4, 8, 12, 16, because 4, four times 1 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 4 times 3 is 12, 4 times 4 is 16. Multiples of 6, 1 times 6 is 6, 2 times 6 is 12. And we can stop there because this is the first multiple that 4 and 6 have in common. So this is the greatest, I mean, uh, the least common multiple that they, they have in common. 24 would be a multiple, but it's not the least common multiple. Number 16, we're gonna simplify this expression. And so we need to follow the order of operations, GEMDAS. Grouping symbols, then exponents, multiplication and division from left to right, so whichever appears first on the left-hand side, and same with addition and subtraction from left to right. So in this expression, we have grouping symbols, these parentheses, so we need to simplify 8 plus 13, which equals 21. And now we need to do division, because we don't have any grouping symbols. Well, we do have grouping symbols, but there's nothing to simplify in there. We don't have exponents, we don't have multiplication, but now it's division. So 21 divided by seven equals three. And now the last 
thing we need to do is add 52 plus 3, which equals 55. Number 17, we're going to simplify this expression, and we need to follow order of operations, Jemdas, and we have grouping symbols, parentheses, but we cannot simplify these because these are not like terms. Can't um, add x's and units. So we're going to do the distributive property multiplication. And so we're going to distribute this 3, 3 times 2x, so 3 groups of 2x's is 6x. And then to the next term, 3 times positive 5 is 15. Now we're going to bring down, rewrite the rest of the expression, bring down the negative 2x. And now we can combine like terms. 6x minus 2x is 4x. And these units are by themselves, so it's 4x plus 15. Number 18, we're going to solve this equation. So we want to find out the value of x. And we're going to do that by doing inverse properties to um, get to isolate the variable. So we need to get this positive 12 over to the other side. So the inverse property of addition is subtraction. We're going to subtract 12. This creates a zero pair because 12 minus 12 is zero. And then what you do to one side, you do to the other. 25 minus 12 equals 13. And you can check your equation by plugging it back in to um, x into the equation. So if x is 13, 13 plus 12 does equal 25. Number 19 is solve this equation. So we want to get x by itself. Um, and so we have x minus 3. The inverse property of subtraction is addition. So we're going to add 3. We created a zero pair. What you do to one side, you do to the other. So we have 15 plus 3 is 18. And always check your solution to make sure that it works back into the equation. So if x is 18, 18 minus 3 does equal 15. For number 20, we're going to find the measure of angle x. So here the um, here's the angle x. And we know the measure of this angle is 90 degrees because of this 90 degree symbol here. So the sum of these two angles equals 90. And if we subtract this 55 from the 90 degree angle, that will give us x. So 90 minus 55 is 35. So the measure of angle x equals 35. And we can check 35 plus 55 does equal 90 degrees. For 20b, we need to find the measure of angle x, and this is a straight line, and the measure of a straight line is 180 degrees. So we know that these two angles have a sum of 180 degrees, so if we subtract the 33 from 180, so 180 minus 33 gives us 147. So we know the measure of angle x is 147 degrees. And you always want to check 147 plus 33 does equal 180 degrees. Problem 21, we're going to graph the inequality y is less than or equal to negative 2. So the first thing you're going to do is um, graph negative 2. And it's going to be a closed circle because it's equal to. So with, since it has this line, we're going to have put, call, um, fill in the circle. If there wasn't an equal to sign, it would be an open circle. And then we're going to check which way um, are we going to draw the arrow that represents all the values that are true for y. And you can check with zero. So if I said y is zero, is zero less than or equal to negative two? No, that's false. So this way would not make, if I graphed it this way, it would not make the inequality true. But all the values to the left will. For example, negative four. Negative four is less than or equal to negative two. <clears throat> The second inequality for 21, 
is y is greater than 4. Well, this time we don't have an equal sign, equal to sign here, so it's going to be an open circle at 4. So I put an open circle. And then I'm going to check using the value of 0, if y equals 0, 0 is greater than 4. So if I said 0 is greater than 4, that's not true. So these values would not make this inequality true. So I know the arrows are going to go to the right. So, and I can always check to make sure this is true by plugging in any value to the right. For example, 5. 5 is greater than 4. That makes it true. For problem 22, we want to evaluate the expression when y equals negative 2. So anywhere in the expression that there's a y, we're going to substitute it with the value of negative 2. So now instead of y plus 8, we have negative 2 plus 8. And when we're adding integers, if you have more positives, it's going to be a positive. The signs are opposite. You subtract. So 8 minus 2 is 6. Now we bring, bring down the 3, and it's still in parentheses. When you have a number next to a parenthesis, it means to multiply. So we have 3 times 6, which is 18. Problem 22b, we're going to evaluate the expression when x equals 4. So here is x. We're going to substitute the value of x with 4. And so now we have 4 squared, or 4 to the second power. That means 4 times 4, which is 16. Now we do 64 divided by 16, which is 4. 23a, we're going to solve the equation for x. So we want to get x by itself. And this is 7x, and when you have a number and a variable next to each other, that implies multiplication. So the inverse property of multiplication is division. And we're going to divide by 7 to create that giant 1, because 1 multiplied by x is x. And what you do to one side, you do to the other. 42 divided by 7 is 6. So x equals 6. Check your answer. If x equals 6, 7 times 6 does equal 42. For 23b, we have x divided by 4 equals negative 3. So we want to get x by itself, so we need to eliminate this 4 on the left side. And we can do that by doing the inverse of division, which is multiplication. And we're going to divide, I mean multiply by a 4, because this creates the giant, the giant diagonal one. Or if we distribute this 4, 4 times x is 4x, and then we have the giant one there. And what you do to one side, you do to the other. So here we have, I distributed the 4, so 4x, and then we have the giant 1, negative 3 multiplied by 4, which is negative 12. A negative multiplied by a positive is an equal negative, because this is saying four groups of negative 3s. Or if you had four days, you owe $3. Altogether, you owe $12. And here we have x equals negative 12. And um, if we put in here, negative, x is negative 12, negative 12 divided by 4 does equal negative 3. Or you can do the inverse here, negative 3 multiplied by 4 equals negative 12. For number 24a, we want to write the unit rate as pages per hour. So number of pages read, number of hours. And the unit rate find the unit rate is the y's divided by the x's. So we have the number of pages, 30, divided by the number of hours, 2. 30 divided by 2 is 15. So it's 15 pages per hour. And I could use any ordered pair here. 75 divided by 5 is also 15. 120 divided by 8 is also 15. Next, we're going to write the equation in y equals kx form. And so k represents the unit rate. And then we just have the y value and the x value. And we can check to make sure this is correct by plugging any two of these x and y's into the equation. And so I have 30 for y. 
can 2 for x, well, 15 times 2 does equal 30, so that is true.